children, shalom. I'm so thankful that you could stop by today. I have missed you all dreadfully. Since we're together again, how about I tell you a story? One of my favorite stories. Not only is it about a super incredible woman who has many, many admirable qualities, but she's also a hero. So do you know what that would make her? A superhero! I don't want to give too much away, but as we talk about her story, you'll see that she does have countless qualities that would all qualify to make her such a champion. But let's see if you can pick out some of them on your own. Then we will sum them all up in the end and we will see what her biggest, most superhero strength is. So here is the story of Abigail. But first, a little backstory about some of the characters. So we've all heard of King David, right? So this story takes place before David was crowned as king, but he was already famous as a victorious warrior and anointed as the future king of Israel. But at this time in history though, David was a man on the run. With his army of men, they had fled from a mad king, Saul, who had wanted to take David's life. And then there is Nabal, Nabal of Carmel. Nabal was known as a foolish and unruly man who was a very wealthy herdsman. This rich and rowdy Nabal, he was married to Abigail. And Abigail, she is the only woman described in the Bible to have both beauty and brains. So in this story, David and his men had camped and they had camped near Nabal's shepherds and herds. But not out of obligation, but because it was the right thing to do, they had looked after Nabal's herds and men. In doing so, they were following one of the greatest commandments, to love your neighbor. So soon, David and his men, they were hungry and needed provisions. David remembered the wealth of Nabal and he knew that he would be feasting and celebrating because it was sheep shearing time, a time of rejoicing and a festival. David thought surely Nabal would invite them to join in the feasting. After all, he and his men had looked after Nabal's shepherds and his flocks. So David sent enough men to haul back a feast and he sent them to inquire of Nabal. But living up to his reputation, Nabal gave them a hard no. Nabal was selfish, sarcastic, and insulting of David to his men. That was not a good idea at all. As soon as David heard this, his temper flared. I can only imagine how red his face must have been. He was ready to repay evil with evil, and David set out on an even bigger band of men to kill Nabal and all of his household. Oh no! But one of Nabal's servants had overheard Nabal talking with David's men. And he knew if someone didn't intervene, they were doomed. But sweet, beautiful Abigail, she had her own reputation. And so the servant made a beeline straight to Abigail, pleading for help. Recognizing the urgency, lickety split, Abigail got to work. She put together enough food for an enormous feast she had it loaded on donkeys and quickly sent to David's camp. Making sure the coast was clear and without asking her husband because she already knew his answer, she headed out on donkey to meet David as well. So let's pause. Wow, what a story. So far, 
we have seen that the servant knew exactly who to turn to. This tells us that Abigail must have had a reputation for not only being a leader by putting things into action, but also of a peacekeeper and of doing the right thing. Abigail could have grabbed her servants to prepare for battle and fight back, but no, she prepared a feast. Abigail could have done nothing and just sit back and let disaster strike out of fear of her husband. But there was no fear in Yahweh, and Abigail knew that. Abigail didn't think to send them money or to beg for her life. No, her initial gut reflex was to fulfill the needs of David and his men, and she prepared them food. That's so loving, a great example of loving your neighbor. And two, the servant, he didn't even hesitate to run to Abigail. Could you imagine being that servant and having to question Nabal? Oh my goodness, what a scary thought. He must have known Abigail's kindness and he was free and comfortable to approach her. Again, how loving. So back to the story. Once Abigail reaches David, she descends from her donkey and falls to her face in reverence, giving honor to the future king of Israel. She makes a request to be heard. Her words spoke to David's calling as the anointed of God and future king. It woke him from his wrath and immediately stopped him before he was to wreak havoc and bloodshed or commit acts that he most certainly would have regretted later. She had sent the food ahead of her, so even before she spoke a word to him, his needs had already been met. So in her appeal, she interceded for her husband. She admitted Nabal's sin and his foolishness, but she asked for the blame to be upon her. Such a stark difference between Nabal's arrogance and Abigail's humility. Next, she begins to speak words of prophecy over David, quickly changing from intercessor to prophetess. She begins to speak blessings over David and condemnation of all of his enemies. She also gives a soft warning that Yahweh would partner with David and fight his battles, but that David should not engage in any vengeful actions himself, as that would bring considerable grief. And she closes her plea with a request for remembrance when he is sitting on the throne of Israel. Her carefully chosen words immediately disarmed David, and he recognizes that she must have been sent from Yahweh. Yahweh had directed Abigail's path. David was quick to first give thanks to Yahweh, and then to thank Abigail and granting her request. David sent her away peacefully, sparing the lives of all of her household, and sparing himself and all his men the regret of shedding innocent blood. Abigail's wisdom and quick action allowed life to continue. What a victory! I'm sure she was so relieved. Once home, she could now tell her husband of how her actions had saved their estate. But she found him feasting like a king and not such a desirable state. He had had too much wine. Knowing there's a time for everything, she knew it was best to wait until morning when Nabal would be clear-headed and could better understand. So the next day, understandably excited, she detailed everything that had happened, but Nabal's heart failed him in hearing and 10 days later, 
Mabel passed away. But soon thereafter, once David had heard, David called Abigail to be his wife. What a happy ending for Abigail. It would have done Nabal well, though, to have known and lived by the scriptures as well as Abigail. There's numerous examples and warnings in scripture that you are not to make fun of, talk down to, or harm God's anointed. Also sounded like mean old Nabal didn't walk in love very often either. Abigail, on the other hand, she makes me think of several scriptures. There's one in Matthew 5, 9, and it says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Abigail's obedience, it led to peace, to safety, to provision, and then finally release from a not-so-good husband to a man that was after God's own heart, King David. The other scripture that really jumps out at me is Proverbs 15, 1, about how a soft answer can turn away wrath, because that's just what Abigail did to defuse the situation. So, what do you think Abigail's greatest super strength is? We've seen wisdom and kindness We've seen peacekeeping and leadership. We've seen obedience, courage, and discernment. Each of these deserve a cape of their own. But the overwhelming, overriding theme of all of these is love. Loving God in obedience and loving her neighbor from her husband and servants to David and his men. Like the scripture goes, the greatest of these is love. I really hope you enjoyed your story today. It is one of my favorites. So let's get together again soon. Shalom. <laughs>